Greetings folks, in today's video we're going to be looking at these awesome little exact servos from FR Sky. They are seriously, seriously high quality servos, probably wasted on any of the foamies you can see behind me. More designed for uh, high-end gliders or discus launch gliders, something that requires super accuracy and uh, quality. So it's the exact series of digital Metal Gear servos. Uh, they're all high voltage, uh, so they can run on uh, 2S LiPo and uh, be more powerful at that higher voltage. They can also, these little ones, can also run down to 3.7 volts, so that means you can um, run them on a 1S LiPo up to a 2S LiPo plug straight into the receiver. Uh, without the need for a BEC. At the moment on my discus launch glider I'm using a 2S LiPo and a BEC going into the receiver because they're normal rubbish servos in there. Uh, with these higher quality digital metal, metal gear high voltage servos um, gives me a lot more options for powering the DLG. They are PWM, uh, S bus and F port 2 capable so the ones I have are, are 8.8 grams. There's the HV5612 and the HV5611. The HV2612 has uh, tabs for vertical mounting in the fuselage and the uh, 5611 has the tabs to allow it to mount flat in a wing. Tiny little, little servos, 8.8 .8 grams uh, at 8.4 volts, that's the high voltage uh, 4.1 kilogram force centimetre, that means that one centimetre out from the spindle can apply uh, 4.1 kilograms if you're using 8.4 volts. Now as well as all of that, these are telemetry capable servos as well. So if you're using um, Access or Archer uh, receiver like the R10 Pro or the uh, Archer M Plus, you can actually get telemetry back from the receiver, uh, from the servo uh, current, voltage, temperature and status. It works on OpenTX and Ethos. Uh, with OpenTX you have a Lua script uh, that you use to configure the settings in the receiver and uh, in Ethos it's sort of directly configurable from within Ethos. You can configure the sweep angle, you can change from 120 degrees to 90 degrees uh, the sweep angle, so you can go from clockwise to counterclockwise, uh, the servo ID and the F port channel, which you need to change if you're going to use um, them all on the same signal. Now with normal PPM use, uh, this is the normal ser servos that we're all used to, you have a separate channel for each servo. Uh, when you're using the serial protocol like SBUS or F port, you need to tell it which channel to pay attention to, basically, because every servo gets all the signals coming from the radio. Um, so that's one of the things you have to set up in the configuration. Now I also have this little gadget here which is a channel extender. This is the FP2-4 uh, channel. Allows you to feed F port in and, and power in and have multiple F port out uh, ports on the other side there. So you can connect your servos individually to each one of them or, or an F port 2 capable sensor. Kind of makes um, powering up and uh, controlling the servos a little bit easier I suppose but you can as I have done, just make, make up a wiring loom like this. So that's one cable coming out of the, the S, uh, coming out of the F port receiver and uh, they're all the servo connections there. So I'll demonstrate that to you. You can also update the firmware and you probably do have to to the latest firmware for it all to work together uh, using the S port port on your transmitter. Now they're not cheap, they're high end servos. They're around $45 US I think, uh, but for anyone who's put decent servos in a, a discus launch glider, it's about the same price as a Diamond D47 or maybe a bit more expensive or the KST servos, all those high quality servos. But uh, yeah, I think this is probably the highest quality uh, and most uh, configurable servo I have held in my hand. Now, first off, I'll show you, they are just normal PWM capable servos. We've got our servo tester here, plug it in and we just have normal PWM operation there, as you would expect, but we can also run it on F port. So this is an Archer M plus uh, receiver running on F port and access, you need access to get F port 2. 
So I'll plug all the servos in. Now all of these signal cables are the same signal cable, so the servo has to know which particular instruction to pay attention to coming through that signal, which channel to obey. So there we go, we have four servos coming through, power and signal are all joined together, coming through a single wire, so we will plug that into uh, the receiver. Bit of power, just 5 volt power here. We have action and there, there's the aileron servos, there's the elevator servo and there's the rudder servo. So that is all just running down this one signal cable. Each servo knows which channel to pay attention to. So we go to the telemetry page and uh, discover new sensors. And you can see we, we get these uh, servo, uh, servo amps, voltage, temperature and status uh, showing up in the telemetry. These are all items we can use in our telemetry screens. So now we go to uh, the Lua script. Got it sitting in scripts there. Uh, execute. Now this is the OpenTX Lua script screen, so you can only connect one receive uh, one servo at a time to set it up, uh, and we get physical ID, servo ID, refresh timer. If you're just using the servos on PWM, you don't need to set any of this stuff up. You can use it uh, straight out of the box. So physical ID is used to differentiate between different FRSky products or devices uh, in the model setup. Servo ID, or on the Ethos screen, uh, that's called Application ID. That's used to differentiate between similar sorts of uh, telemetry coming in, uh, so that you can display uh, like two different servo telemetry. Uh, refresh timer, we don't change that. Change the uh, servo sweep to 120 degrees. So there we go, 120 degrees. We change the direction clockwise to anti-clockwise so that's going down when I go to the right now it's going up when I go to the right pulse PWM pulse type I didn't know what this was but um, apparently some flight control boards need 760 60 microseconds instead of 1500 microseconds but if you're using it on S port or F port, you do need to select which channel you're going to use the servo on. So that's what you do with this one here. And then we save it to flash to make sure it's saved. Now if you do want to show multiple telemetries from servos, from different servos on the telemetry screen, you do need to change both of these, the physical ID and the servo ID or the application ID for each servo. So let's have a look at the uh, Ethos screen now. So we'll swap, swap receivers for the Ethos. I have the R10 Pro, which is also F port 2 capable. Can plug the power into the receiver. And once again, uh, that's working okay now. Uh, we go to model setup and then telemetry, uh, discover sensors, and it'll show up in the list there. And you can go to device configuration here. So there we have physical ID and application ID, same as servo ID in the uh, OpenTX version. Uh, you'll notice the physical IDs are sort of identified differently, but I guess the different systems use different identification methods. Same thing, data rate, range, direction, PWM pulse type, and uh, channel. And save the flash down the bottom there. There's also a device configuration screen here, and we go to exact, where once again you can uh, configure each individual servo. Oh, just one more thing too, if you're having uh, four different sets of servo telemetry displayed on screen you want to be able to differentiate between each different servo of course don't you 
Um, so you can change the name of each sensor. So in the sensor page here, you can uh, change the name of each sensor here. So you might want to call it uh, servo aileron and servo elevator or something like that. So you know which servo the uh, piece of telemetry is coming from. I'm not too sure I'd actually use this, the uh, telemetry from servos very much, but something that would be interesting maybe is uh, the maximum uh, current draw over a flight. That will give you an idea of what the total drain from the servos is. So that plus sign gives you the maximum over the telemetry period. But there doesn't seem to be a maximum and minimum option in uh, ethos for the telemetry. It's only the actual current value by itself or volt by itself. So maybe that's something for the future with ethos. So there you go. They're the exact HV5611 and 5612 servos from FR Sky. An amazing collection of features and uh, a really high tech, really powerful, really accurate, beautiful little servo. Perfect for a little DLG. I'd like to put them in my DLG, but the other servos are so well stuck into the wing, I, I think I'd ruin the wings trying to get them out. I could put them in the uh, fuselage, though. I might do that and uh, see how they perform. I'm sure they are going to be fantastic. Very, very nice little servos. Thanks for watching.